the res- so I was misusing power, or it was the, misused. The, 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 the soul with another personality yeah. was was misusing it, but it brought the cellular memory into this lifetime. I see. So to see if you can work out the proper use of it. Yeah. So that's the most important number in the chart. Wow. That nine. Okay. 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 So. And the reason it's been difficult to work through is because your talents are very etheric, very, very delicate energies, and you've got this big, powerful dragon which has been feeling disempowered. So it's not going to have much effect. That's why it's been a sh- struggle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so, I'm not using that name, so I haven't used this name since 20, age 20. So. But it creates your entire life. It's like oh, the, okay. yeah, it, a, a change of name puts a new set of frequencies into you, like a layer of icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. But it still is dominant. That's dominant. the substance. This, of this is the basis that creates everything, which is okay. why we start with this. Okay. So, in phys- spiritual karma, Kathleen's got a 15 and a 6. And the 15 is what we call inner circular movement. So, have you been going around in circles in your life? Oh, yeah. Been younger? <laughs> oh, yeah. Trying out lots of different things? Yeah. Yeah. So this is Kathleen going around in circles trying to find out what feels right to her and getting very insecure and restless when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then moving on. Yeah. Yeah. And the six is about learning to be focused and achieving things, making things happen. So did you find your focus was challenging when you were younger? You had too many things going on at once? I was good in school, and I thought that would carry me through, but then it just didn't seem to be follow through yeah. in the way that I imagine yeah. it might. Yeah. So this is about setting clear goals, doing the strong, there'll be many different choices with the six, and it's about feeling which one opens your heart the most, then working out about manageable steps of success to actually achieve it. That's what that's about, and completing it. And when you complete something, then you break through the blockage and the creativity. Mm-hmm. Okay. The spiritual talents are fours, and the fours are about the absorption and duplication of knowledge, ideas, money. Do you love telling everyone about the good stuff you learn? Yeah. Yeah, so this is like a teacher, flowing of knowledge, okay? Okay. How's your level of trust in the flow? Good, really good. Yeah. Okay. And the spiritual goals are 178, and this is about oppression as a child by parents and authority figures. Oh, yeah. has, has it been a major thing in relationships, being oppressed? Yeah. And disempowered? Yeah. Yeah. Been single most of my life, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. So the 17 eight is about learning to overcome the oppression by authority and talking your way through it mm-hmm. and breaking through that to become grounded and have very clear boundaries because this nine indicates it won't be so, the boundaries won't be so clear because of the oldest empowerment, we lose our sense of boundaries because it happens at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so it's about getting clear boundaries, coming into a power, expressing who you truly are. And the sum total of all this is the soul destiny. How are you with restaurant menus and choosing something? I'm decisive. Yeah. How yeah. were you when you were younger? I think I was decisive. Okay. Stubborn. Is, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Have you entered into relationships perceiving someone to be one thing and they yeah. turn out to be something completely different. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's the issue, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, because the seven indicates that there is a heart wound from childhood and the inner child, one half of that link which unites, hid away and said, I don't want to be seen mm-hmm. cause I'll be by anyone because I'll be rejected or I'll be seen as bad. And I'm going to put out a facade, the right-hand link. I'm going to put out an image, a professional image, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you can see that, but you can't see the real me. Mm-hmm. Sound familiar? Sure, sure. Okay. And yeah. so the idea, and what this is, because you have to make a key decision in life, which is shall I show my real self or not? And because you are still in that process of doing that, that's why you can't tell what the truth is about a relationship can't tell if it's real or not, but you might enter into it and a couple of years down the road or long you realise it's not who I, this person is not who I perceived they were. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's been the main issue I think, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the first thing to do to resolve the relationship issues is to heal the heart, Kathleen. Heal the inner child so that she can drop that facade so she doesn't have to subconsciously control everything and bring her true self out to the world by expressing her true feelings and thoughts and move up that scale of consciousness, which we showed earlier, and be in pure truth. And when you're in pure truth, everyone else around you has to come into their truth. And your heart heals, and then you'll get a feel of some, who someone truly is. So there's what's called a dreamland filter with the seven. Mm-hmm. So what you've got to ask yourself ne- the next time you go dating is in, and form a relationship or think about forming a relationship, is it, is it real? <laughs> That's a good question. That's it's important. <laughs> That's a very deep question. Yeah, is it real? And you've got to look yeah. for evidence that it's real and be very cautious okay. as you heal your heart. How many of you here have entered into relationships and found they were not what you perceived they were? Yeah, it could be two kids down the road and five years, ten years in a marriage. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. had that. So, <laughs> so the thing is that um, with this, when you heal your heart, you'll just know, you'll feel it. Your heart will open and if you're your authentic self in that state, mm-hmm. then you'll know who the other person is. But only until when you reach that stage can you then be successful with a better chance in a relationship. They're pretty challenging as it is. But this thing is mm-hmm. showing you in a complete illusion. It's very strong. Even if you're aware of it, it can be very strong. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it's not, just because you're aware of it doesn't mean it's going to go away. So you've got to actually do the conscious work and heal the heart to actually be able to find someone who... So what's, what's the evidence? Just, just a good feeling of elation and, and real... Well, it, it's, it's, How it's will your I know? perception of what goes on. You relate to the actual actions and the outcome of what actually happens oh, okay. in a relationship, yeah. which you might have noticed don't line up, haven't lined up very well probably right. for you. That's how you tell. Right, okay. Is he who he says he is? Does he deliver yeah. in whatever level you need as a woman? Okay. Okay, so how does all this sound? Um... What we just talked about. It. Um, I, I was asking Barbara the other day. You know, why has it taken so long? Like I feel like a sense of urgency, and I feel like I've kind of been in a holding pattern for twenty years. So, could could you say something about that? Why, why the soul doesn't go on a continuum, but it just seems to be like. You're in a holding pattern, I would say, for 20 years. There's nothing happening, really. Well, sometimes we need to wait for the right moment. You just found out a lot today and you've had a reading with Barbara previously. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we need to sit in the patterns for longer than we'd like to actually get to the point where we say, I've had enough, whatever it takes, I'll do it. Or we need certain frequencies, certain experiences from some people in our relationships, which we don't cover in this particular level of the work, to actually grow. So it might be the time now. Because, I mean, I was, I was finding my way through, you know, very diff- all kinds of spiritual modes, but it wasn't, it wasn't clicking. It wasn't doing the job, in other words. It had to be something really profound. Yeah, well, in your case, the key is this nine and physical goals coming into your power and is the key to the whole thing. That If you can come fully into your power and trust your gut feeling of what is right to do and carry it out, uh-huh. then that will unlock the whole chart for you in this case. So coming to your power is the key because the heart wound comes from being disempowered as a child. Yeah. Okay, that's the key to it. Then everything else will happen. Yeah, that was quite a setup. I, I, yeah, it was quite a, <laughs> I engineered it. You did. <laughs> you you did. Um, yeah. So does that help clarify things? Yes, it's very helpful. Okay. Yeah. All right, so how many of you guys have actually got your charts on you? Okay, so thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. So are you saying then that her main goal, her destiny? Just, just grab the microphone, yeah. So are you saying that her main destiny goal for her destiny now is to find her power yes okay that's the key okay so you guys might want to switch on your phones if you got so barbara can email you she's emailed you your charts okay so you can look use your phones now to look at your charts because i'm going to tell you what they mean so 
Okay. Okay, can you... Oh, just quickly, then there's a lady behind Oh, I had a question also about the names when you said that you choose your name and then you hope your parents pick that name. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are named after their parents. You know what I'm saying? Or the grandfather or the... Well, let's part. The soul chooses that. Okay. The soul chooses that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We have, a, we have one more question because I want to actually get through the 22 numbers so you guys can understand what your charts are about. It has to be quick. So if we're going by name, what about two people who have the exact same name? Well, the differences are there's, a DNA, there's DNA, ancestral input, past lives, astrological influence. So lives will be similar but not identical. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, because there's a lot of you, Okay, I'm going to go through the 22 numbers and tell you what they mean, both positively and a positive expression and a negative expression. So you might want to take some notes because I'm going to explain your lives, lives to you. Okay? And when I talk about the positive aspect, that applies in the talent position, either spiritual or physical. When I talk about the negative expression, it applies especially to the karmic position, but also to the goal position, which is sort of half karmic, or half positive, half negative, because that's not possible to do each of your charts, given we've got about 25 minutes, okay? So how many of you guys have got a one in your chart? Okay, so one is unity, power, and stability. It's the energies of the masculine aspect of God, Archangel Michael. So if it's in a positive aspect, you're very strong, very warrior-like, very much in your power. If it's in a negative aspect, karma or goals, what it means is that you have a challenge of coming into power relative to the masculine. You could have had a big challenge with your father or lack of father, or you, if you're a man, to step up into your masculine power. Okay? And it's about disseminating healing and knowledge. Did you say that the negative was the right number? Because karma or goals. Karma or goals. Okay. Yeah, ne negative could be karma or goals. Okay. okay. All right? So, let me just put, I'll put the slideshow on so you can see you can see a bit more. Just a minute. Where is it? Okay. So the two, which should actually be probably rotated ninety degrees anti-clockwise. This is our resilient spring. So if it is in talents means you have emotional resiliency. You are you're exploring the energies of, um, or you're trying to become objective. So you're mostly resilient, you have objectivity, you can support each other, people emotionally. You have a lot of wisdom. If it's in karma or goals, it means you're very impulsive. If you act impulsively, you make foolish decisions. And out of those decisions, you learn great wisdom. And also, you're very sensitive to emotional shock. Okay? So this is a very supportive energy for other people. Okay? But for you, it can be quite a challenge because the emotional load of your family will sit on you and will sit on that spring and compress it. How many of you have got threes somewhere in the chart? And how many of you have had challenges financially? Okay, so the three, in the three here, this is called an internal canal. And deep in the canal lies ancient soul wisdom. So if you, you've got this in karma or talents, it means you, you will have a program of feeling unworthy to be loved, which could be triggered by one moment in childhood. It's a very deep program. And what happens is that the ego goes, I'm not worthy to be loved, so I'm going to hide away. And so that unworthiness translates into negative cash flow, overdrafts, loans, debt, whatever, fail businesses, until you clear out the unworthiness and allow the wisdom and knowledge of this li ancient library of knowledge to come out, and you're actually here to become a teacher, communicator, writer, performer. If it's in talents, it naturally means you're a natural leader, you're connected to the soul, you are very much, um, when you speak, everyone listens to you. I have a physical coming through, and that's what's communicating to you now. That enabled me to, me to write that book, for example. Okay, so it's a very powerful number, this one. 
the four here, which we saw for Kathleen, the four is about duplicating the flow of nature, of God's abundance. So whatever comes to you, some talents, you, you duplicate and share. See, Kathleen said she wanted to share whatever she learns. So it's duplicating the flow of nature. If it's in talents, if it's in karma or goals, it means that there's a feeling that I'm not worthy of receiving this flow and I can't duplicate and I won't pass it on because I believe subconsciously no more is going to come. And so in a karmic or goal position, it's where you'll face challenges of trust. You have to learn to take a risk. You know you have to take a risk, but there's no guarantee it will come to pass. But if you do take it, you notice that the universe helps you, and supports you moving forward. Okay, it's all about trust, and the, and the leaps of trust get bigger all the time. So after a while, you realize it's a little scary, but I know it'll work because I've done it enough before. So it's about trusting in the flow. And this is also about the ultimate flow of nature is children. And so this is about sharing yourself with children and learning that the more you share of yourself, the more that will come to you. So this is our swan or fetus. If you have this in karma or goals, it means that you have had past life issues of suppression, execution of your truth. So you could not, you, you were suppressed, persecuted for speaking that truth. So you've got to clear the past life issues because that will lead to a lack of expression, a fear of expression in this life. It usually leads to being shut down like Kathleen was as a child. If it's in talents, someone who's highly psychic, who can feel the energy really well and just knows exactly what's going on, read people's minds. It's in soul destiny, it's similar, the whole lifetime. Soul destiny is like being in karma initially until you work through all the other six aspects. So it's a long time coming. Pardon? Okay. Well, it just means it's focused purely. If you have two of those in talents, it's focused purely on that energy. So it means you're very psychic. You really have to use your intuition to function in the world. Okay? So the six here is what we call a convertible knot. How many of you guys have got sixes? Okay, so how many of you get frustrated at have a good temper? Yeah? So the six here is about taking a thought which really resonates with you and then taking it out into, creatively taking it out into a physical form manifesting in the world. So it's creativity in action. People with this can be very artistic, very creative, or very business-like. Okay? And so it's about, as I said for Kathleen, getting very focused and doing one thing at a time and completing it. Okay? And there's a lot of frustration and anger if it's in calm or goals because the ego is trying to see creative energy in all sorts of different directions and basically it's stopping itself from moving forward in one direction properly. If it's in talents, it's someone who's very creative. <coughs> okay? They're very creative or very business-like. They can get things done, make it happen. This is a seven which we had in Kathleen's Soul Destiny. So if it's in karma or goals, it means you're hiding away because you don't feel safe to show yourself in the world. But the paradox of the lesson is to make a decision to show your real self and actually it's completely safe by being in your truth. And then once you're completely safe, you can make a decision about who you are. With some talents, it's someone who's a networker, very magnetic, very open-hearted, draw lots of like-minded people to them and, and synergizes them into a greater whole. Okay. This is the eight. This is our amoeba. So this is an karma or goals, it means that you don't really want to be here on earth. How many of you guys have got eights? How many of you wish you hadn't come, <laughs> but you made it this far? Yeah. Okay, it's because you're not used to coming here and you're trying to understand the intense, and maybe as a watery creature, you're trying to form clear emotional boundaries with the world, and you're trying to find where the boundary, your boundary is and where everyone else is and not get over-involved in their stuff. 
which gets you in lots of trouble because they don't like it. Okay? And so this one here is about coming and understanding how the polarity of earthly emotions work, joy and sadness. Because initially with an eight, you're going to be in your head all the whole time trying to work, figure out how, you know how men say, I think I feel like this? Well, an eight says the same. They never had a feeling initially. So they're, they have what we call mental body models. And then one day, gradually, that starts to dissolve and they come into their body and start to feel real feelings for the first time, which is a real shock for an eight because it's like, ugh, can't deal with emotions. It's just too dense. But that's the whole point, is to ground in the body, feel the emotions and let go of the mind. Okay? And if it is in, in talent, it's someone who's very good at relating to all sorts of people, they can be like an emotional chameleon at a party. They can change and morph to connect to whoever's there. Okay? So this is our dragon. It's a bit like one of those big black Harry Potter dragons. Really powerful. And so if it's in karma or goals, it's one of the toughest patterns you can have. Second toughest pattern you can have because it will manifest a lot of emotional, mental, spiritual abuse in life because it brings in lots of past life energy of what we call the shadow destroyer. It means the soul with other, another personality seriously misused power, so you come back in to play the other end of that. You'll usually be on the receiving end of that. So this is very abusive marriages or childhood. Okay, It's quite fierce, this one. How many of you guys have got that? Well, in talents it's different. Talents means that you feel very protected and that you can pretty much do what you like down here and no one can stop you. Sound familiar? Good to know. Yeah. So you, yeah, it means it means that um, you 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 can you're a force to be reckoned with. So it's about it's a catalyst. It's a real big red button pusher of everyone else when you have that. Okay. So when a dragon walks in the room, if, if other people don't have the same energy, they find a little intimidating sometimes because they know the dragon can do what it wants, and often it does. Go on. Yeah, two dragons in the soul destiny mean that the whole lifetime is about coming into your power and learning the proper use of that power. Okay? This is the 10. This is called potential manifestation. And spirit always flows in curves, not a straight line. So this energy in talents means you... How many of you guys have got this? It means... It's about bringing the balanced male-female aspects of God through you and opening in consciousness to those energies to bring them through to use those spiritual energies in pure service to, to humanity. If it is in karma or goals, it means you don't trust in that God consciousness coming through you. Part of you completely doubts that it exists, but part of you at the same time believes it. So it's a, it's a conflict. You're flowing in both directions at once. So it's about dissolving the ego's disbelief in higher consciousness and trusting that intuitive flow. So if it's in soul destiny, then? If it's in soul destiny, it means to get to a very high state of consciousness, potentially enlightenment, if you really work on it, but yeah. not many people get there. But you've you got a better chance nowadays than ever before. Okay? This is our 11. So this is our structure here. So if this is in karma or goals, how many of you got, guys have got this? Okay, you may be struggling a bit to grasp this, this evening. But if you watch the video again later, then you'll pick up a lot more. Okay? So this is about learning to discern what structures are my truth, what concepts and ideas are my truth, and I'm going to throw away all the stuff which is not my truth, and I'm going to build this unique structure of truth and take it to the world. So it means the, the assimilation learning process when you're younger is challenging. So you have to hear and experience things in many different ways to actually get that structure. If it's in... Um, and you can malabsorb lots of stuff which is not yours, basically emotional um, garbage from the family and ancestors. If it's in talents, it means you're a builder of truth or a builder of physical things. You want to build a business, build buildings, whatever. And so seeking knowledge is very important in this case. The 12 here is about expansion. Absorption and expansion of knowledge. How many of you guys got 12s? How many of you get out of balance? Get really extreme. And so that comes from uneven expansion in the world and obstacles coming because of that expansion. That's in karma or goals. Okay? 
If it's in talent, it means that you're good, at, you're really good, you read probably six books at once, absorb lots of knowledge, take it to a higher level, and take it out to the world with a three, because a three goes with a 12. This is the 13. This is the divine feminine aspect of God. This is the energy of the new age, Sananda. And so, in talents, this is someone who has a completely open feminine heart, man or woman, who just unconditionally loves and accepts everything and everyone exactly as they are. And people are just naturally magnetised to them by that love. Because most of us go around judging ourselves. The more spiritually aware we become, the more we judge ourselves because we see all our imperfections. But that actually paradoxically locks all our programmes in place and slows us down. So this energy of the 13 just allows us to surrender and accept everything. If it's in karma or goals, how many guys have got this? Not many. You want to go 13? One. A 13 in karma or goals means there's an imbalance in your relationship with a feminine aspect of God, which can result, can be played out with, with the mother or with woman, if you're a man. Okay, or if you're a woman, it could be with your mother, where you didn't, you had a mother was smothering, or she did, she wasn't there. You were adopted. She she was missing, in some way, and so this is about reconnecting. Because we all, one of the primary programs, in the way we feel towards the divine is we feel abandoned by it. So this is feeling abandonment by the feminine aspect of God. Okay, Simba. Means the idea is to come purely into that feminine heart and share that unconditional love, or it could be to become a very good mother if you're a woman, or a very good parent if you're a man. It varies depending on what happens. Okay? The 14 here, how many of you guys have got 14s? How many of you find life's really intense emotionally? Intense relationships, you get burnt out? Because it's called reflected being. So... In a karmic or goal position, you have very intense relationships to find out who you are. It's sort of like the motto would be, I relate, therefore I am. Okay, so it's about learning to pace that intensity so you find out who you are without falling over from the, the burnout which can occur with a 14. If it's in talents, it's good at reflecting to others who they are. Well, your whole life is about lots of relationships to find out who you are. Yeah. Get about six minutes. I'm just trying to get through the rest of these. So, the 15 was Kathleen going around in circles. So, the 15 in karma or goals is going around in circles, trying to find your life path. And you can still be doing it in your 30s or 40s, whereas everyone else has got a career, seems to be happy, probably not. Okay, trying to find your right path see, that sits right in you and what we call the symbolic stomach. If it's in um, talents, it means that you have. You're following a gentle journey to find either God, spirit, higher consciousness, either within you or outside you. 16 is about bringing spiritual energies down to the earth plane here and making them accessible in plain English to people. So you're a bridge from higher consciousness. How many of you guys have got 16s? It's about taking higher consciousness and making it really accessible to people cutting out all the complexity and saying, saying it in a very simple way that people will grasp. If it's in karma or goals, it means there's a resistance to that. So there can, there can be some anger at this energy that comes through. If it's in talents, it means you, you're a very good, what we call dispenser of different spiritual functions to people. Okay. The 17 we had with Kathleen is like a symbolic mouth. It's about speaking about spirit, higher consciousness in society. If it's in talents, it means you're very good at relating to lots of people, like one of these in my physical talents. If it's in karma or goals, it means that your expression was totally suppressed as a child. Parents ignored you. Okay? And you have to literally talk your way through it. I had one client, we spent 95% of sessions for two years. She just talked her way through her childhood trauma. In the end, she was, she was better because she needed to talk her way through this program. Okay? 18, how many of you guys got an 18s? How many did you procrastinate? No. 18. Yeah, an 18 is about finality and solution. This is you from many past lives coming to the point, shall I follow the flow of spirit or not? 
And someone like this will procrastinate because they want to make the right decision. So they will do lots of research to make sure in karma or goals they make the right decision because they're scared of making the wrong one. And it's about them learning that they can only make the best decision possible by trusting their gut feel because a nine goes with that. Okay? And if it's in talents, they have very good project managers. They can make the hard decisions, carry them out, complete things. If it's in karma or goals, they'll procrastinate about 80% of the way through. They'll say, oh, I'll get someone else to do it, and they won't finish things. Okay? So the 19 is about bringing spiritual energies down to the earth plane, forming a physical form out of it for others to come into to learn about and achieve their goals. And if it's in talents, they'll have the ability to do that, build a center, hold space. If it's in karma goals, they'll be resisting the spiritual energy and they'll be misusing it. They may want to set up a center, for example, but they'll face huge challenges doing that. It might take them the whole lifetime to actually achieve that. Okay? The 20, how many of you guys got 20s? How many of you had a lot of conflict in your life? This is, this, this is what we call war and peace, if it's in karma or goals. It's where you have internal emotional war, usually past life stuff and ancestral stuff. It's about trying to reach emotional peace by cleaning out the conflict within you. It's about great movement, then to move out of rigid belief systems to actually be able to flow with lots of different ranges of spiritual experience. And with the talents of someone who's just very flexible, they will go on, they'll go far beyond the norm in terms of exploring life, either physically or spiritually. Who's got a 21? Anyone got a 21? How many of you had to endure a lot of hardship? A lot of challenges and you, you got strong from it yeah so this is the divine mother aspect and so this is the power a woman has to last say three days to give birth whereas most of us men would die in the first three minutes doing that okay and so this is the enormous power of the divine mother and so it's building, building great strength overcoming hardship okay to become very strong to take on the big challenges in life break the big boulders so if it's in karma or goals it means you can get stuck lots of inertia because unless something's, unless you can, unless you, something's challenging enough, you won't rise to the occasion. You do little things. If it's in talents, it means you can take on the challenges and you enjoy them. But after a while, in either position, you get to the point where you're looking for the easy way. How many of you guys with us are looking for the easy way now? No? Still breaking boulders? Okay. So the last one is a 22. Who's got a 22? Anyone? The 22 is the blending of mind, body, and soul within the circle of call it God, great spirit. This is completion. This is source. And if it's in talents, this is someone who can draw from source, from all the high multidimensional parts of themselves, in completeness, whatever anyone needs, and can speak from that. If it's in karma or goals, it's very challenging because the ego believes that most of us unconsciously believe we feel abandoned by great spirit God because by being in a body, someone with us in karma believes there is no God. They feel it's just me stuck in this body, in this reality, and there's no way home. So they they mentally they understand about that, but they, about higher consciousness, but they may feel that they've been completely cut off. Okay, so this is the toughest, one of the toughest patterns you can have. So, the other 22 numbers, so I hope that's helped. Um, you probably need to listen to this a few times to grasp all the, all the different parts of it, okay? Um, if you want to learn more about it, the book gives in great detail how you do the chart, which you all, most of you should have by now, but it basically explains what all the numbers mean in all the positions in great depth. Most importantly, it tells you the recommendations which tell you what, do you what do you do about it. Now you've found out all well, the secret of life, the real secret. This is very accurate, as you've probably discovered, looking at your charts. It shows you actually how to navigate your life so you can actually break through the patterns we just talked about so they're no longer stopping you. I'm not saying it's going to always be... It's, it's easy, but at least you know what's actually creating your reality and what you can do about it. So that's what the book allows you to do. 
Okay. Um, and if you like a more in-depth sort of customised understanding of your chart, Barbara there, who card was on there, she can give you more in-person reading on Skype or in person. She lives in Grass Valley. She's one of my soul contract practitioners. If you want to know more about it, because depending on where you are in your stage of life, your contract will read differently because it depends on how much you work through. It's not a function of age. It's a function of how much consciousness and dedication you've placed on your spiritual journey. Um, other things we have here. How many of you are therapists? Yeah, if you want to learn how to use this work in your therapeutic practice for others, we have a training which we're running in Asheville, North Carolina, starting on the 15th of May in person, or you can come on web, on web stream as well. It's fully interactive. And we also offer that as a 12-session um, a training over about three months starting in June, if Asheville's too soon. Uh, and the other... The other things we offer, there's a thing called divine healing, which is a very powerful healing modality using higher self to dismantle all that you could discover in the contract in a very fast way. That was the other brochure there. Because the soul contract provides the map, but then you've got to go and do something about burning through all the programs. That's why we developed divine healing. Our mirror and my ex-business partner developed it. It's very powerful. And if you just want to learn how to align with your own contract, we have a thing called creating bliss in your everyday life, which is using this work it's an online training for eight sessions, mid-June-ish, we'll probably start it, where we teach you actually how to flow with each of your aspects and how to work through them. So actually how to navigate your life practically with tools to align with your purpose. Okay? So I, I just had to hit nine o'clock because that's what I agreed with with East West. So I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to have a book signing now, so if you want to ask me any questions, that's the time to ask me there. Okay? Thank you for your time.